Hello there. <clears throat> I'm Black Bright and um, I was asked to do a video about women, black women. And I noticed um, in the comments that someone said, what aspect of black women do you want to talk about? Well, let me first talk about criticism. I'm going, I've broken it down to mind, body and soul. As you're watching me now, you could be thinking, oh, I wonder how old she is. I wonder if that's her hair. I wonder if she's got any kids. I wonder if she's got a man. I wonder, you know, where she lives or all kinds of stuff. Women are, black women in particular, are constantly criticised. But let me kind of break it down why I think black women who are the strongest, who are meant to be the strongest, who have a perception of being the strongest are slowly being broken down and how that is happening. The weakest link, what is our weakest link? Our weakest link, love, especially the love of our children. Now, can you imagine having children and as in the case of that video I showed earlier in the week, um, the child is being taken away for no reason. That woman was resorted to almost a mental breakdown. We also have our children. We're not sure if they're coming home when they go out. That's breaking down. We don't, you know, men, you know, as men, a lot of black men are rejecting black women. Not all of them, but a lot of them are rejecting black women. We also have black men in the jails or in mental institutions. So what what once built up our parents and our grandparents, that system of men that built up the family and built up our parents and our grandparents no longer exist to a very large extent. So there's women being broken down in so many different ways, but mainly through her children today. She sends her son out. She's not sure if he's going to be stopped by the police. She's not sure she's going to get a knock at the door. That anxiety, that depression, she's not sure if she can do enough. The school is failing them. They're being expelled from school. Like I said, this isn't a generalised statement. I'm talking about a certain sector of, of families who are experiencing this kind of lifestyle. There's a lot of black women out there who, as soon as their sons go out, they have to think, oh, I wonder if he's going to come back safe. Or I wonder if I'm going to get a knock at the door. That is stress. That is destroying the mind. Children being taken off for whatever reason. Husbands and boyfriends and partners being deported. So those who did have a half decent man, they've lost him. You know, it's it's a very slow and insidious um, process. Um You've got the failed education, you've got the right racism. I mean, a lot of people think, oh, black women are OK. They're doing all right. You know, they're the ones with jobs. They're the ones with this. They're the ones with that. They've got homes. But, you know, black women are always looking out for other people and they're leaving themselves last. So a lot of times they're not being nurtured. They're not being looked after. People look at them and think, oh, yeah, they're OK. So their needs, are, by a lot of time, are not being met because they're too busy. They have that maternal instinct. So they're too busy worrying about other people until in the end, they just start worrying about themselves, because if they don't worry about themselves, nobody will. So um, the weakest link is the children um, who are be either being taken in care um, their, their sons or their male partners um, could be subject to Section 60 or they might not come home for some other reason. Um, not sure if the somebody's going to knock on the door and say their children are dead. Um, children expelled from school. Um, some children are on the streets involved in gangs. And of course, we've got this knife crime that's happening now with some of our boys. We don't know if it's going to happen to our sons. Um, the father figure is missing in a lot of cases, so they haven't got that balance. Um, the failed education and, of course, the deportation. Apparently, according to um, 
We Are Agenda, which is an organization um, dealing in mental health. They said 29% of black women, 24% of Asian women, and 29% of mixed race women have mental health disorders. Um, either depression, anxiety, they're taking Prozac, antipsychotic drugs, and goodness what else, because they can't cope with what's happening. Okay, so that's the mind. That's the breaking down of the mind, destroying women through a slow process of the mind. Um, and then you have the body, you have um, the constant criticism, oh, she's too fat, she's too this, or why doesn't she do this, or why doesn't she do that? So there's that constant um, internal pressure to look a certain way in order to be accepted in jobs, in order to be accepted by the status quo. Just generally, um, women are not, black women in particular, for some reason, they undergo more scrutiny than anybody else, than any other race, from my experience anyway. Um, You've got, the, you've got rape, you've got domestic abuse, you've got contaminated food, you've got the perception that black women are angry, hostile, aggressive, independent and all of these stuff. So you've got all of this stuff where um, with regard to the body and with regard to criticism and all those expectations which impact the body and it imp impacts the way a woman feels. So it's kind of one is compounding the other. And of course, you've got the soul, the soul of the woman slowly being destroyed um, through racism, no love, um, the need to conform. You find that, you know, a lot of women, especially in the work workplace, they have to. Um, I mean, I know it's not just black women. A lot of us have to conform to a certain extent, but it's about uh, the pressure to conform and not being able to be ourselves just in case they misunderstand the way we communicate or the way that we are. Um, like I said, you've got the guilt, the maternal instinct comes into force. Is your husband okay? Is your partner okay? Are the kids okay? You're worrying about everybody and leaving yourself on the back burner. Um, the mind, well, Fending for yourself, basically. I guess that's what I, that's kind of what I've just said. And yeah, so it's you know it's a weird kind of a situation because black women in particular, they are the matriarch. They do that. You know, this image is presented that they are the strong. They are the ones that are holding up the family. They're the ones that are holding up the the um, the children. And back in the days, that's what women did. They looked after the home, they looked after the children, they looked after their husbands. And their husbands would go off to work and they'd come back and they'd have that nurturance when the husband came. Oh, it was all worth it. You know, that was the reward. He'd bring in the money and she'd be able to go out and do the shopping and look after her family. That's not happening now. All the burden, the majority of the burden is on that woman. That, that man that she um, wants to depend on just in case things aren't going right in her life is not there. She hasn't got a lot of women don't have a partner who's going to come home and who she can talk about her day to and who she's going to be offload about how the children behaved in school or what's happened to the children in school or how she's feeling about um, the son's not coming home or her fears and all her reservations. They don't have that. A lot of women don't have that. So they, they're kind of stuck in this situation where they talk to a few friends and then the friends are kind of either getting fed up of them moaning or their friends have got something else that's occupying their mind. And they're not really interested in what they have to talk about. There's no, no, no common interest. The thing is, with a man and a woman who've brought children in the world, there should be that common interest. The two of them are working together to raise the children and look for the children's best interest. But when all of that is on one person, I mean, you've got a lot of single fathers as well. But regardless of whether it's a single father or a single mother, when all that onus is on one person, it's difficult. And people need to share. When people can't share and it's all stuck inside, 
That's what causes depression. That's what causes suicides. That's what causes a lot of things. Remember Muggy Mike? I mean, he was going through his situation. I mean, he was famous. He didn't have anybody to share his hurts with, his pains, his struggles. And that's what's happening with women and that's what's breaking them down. There's nobody that they can share with. They can have superficial conversations with a few people. But to get deep, and then, you know, sometimes when they go to a counsellor and it brings up too much baggage, some of them, they, they, it throws them off the top. They can't cope with it. So a lot of people, yes, while a lot of us are responsible for the decisions we've made and the life choices, you know, sometimes situations, it, shit happens, so to speak. People do make mistakes. But it doesn't mean that the rest of their lives, they've got to be paying for it. And the system is slowly eroding and, and taking away the woman's strength because, you know, they're already um, working on the men. I mean, the men are being pushed down slowly, slowly, slowly. But there's this kind of expectation when people are looking at men that they are from, hist from history. Men have always been pushed down or try to push out of the way and try to look like the bad guy but no so it's left that women are okay the black women they're okay they'll fend for the family they'll do this and that but nobody's looking at how they are being slowly eroded how they are slowly being pushed down and pushed out nobody's looking at that because all that's all done very very subtly very very subliminally and as you see women are getting you know when I saw that woman in that video whose children were taken away and apparently for no reason that's you know that's another part so they've taken away the men put them in prison they're taking you know they've taken away the boys well in a sense taken away the boys because um, once they go out on the street we don't know if they're coming back and now they're taking children out of homes and into care. So what else can they do to kind of destroy the woman? So yeah, women are not, as much as you think, oh, black women have got it great and they're doing this and they're managing all by themselves. That's not the true story, folks. You know, slowly, 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 it's all happening. It's happening in different parts of the world, to so different sectors of people. And yes, I'm talking about black women because I'm black. It could well be happening to Asian women. It could well be happening to um, other women. Well, any race of women, actually. But I am talking for black pe women because I am black. OK, and that's it. Bye bye.